when I've been looking through the old computer files, having a major clear out and get rid of stuff, and I'm deleting it. They are going, whoosh, gone. There's a few little clips. I thought I'd put them together in a sequence for you. Just basically, it's a sort, it's for all anglers, but with the emphasis on beach fishermen. We've all been up against it this last winter, shore fishing. It might just give you a bit of hope for when we eventually get let out to play again. Está mal, es muy adicto a lo que diga la gente. Rico de maní, pero pobre de su mal. Solo que dice, ¿no? Quiere todo eso, quiere comprar lo que el dinero no le da. Qué mala vida la que tiene, con tantos bajos y placeres. Se Yo quiero tan poco pa' joder En la vida un ganador si sabe perder Lo que nunca tuve de chico quiero tener Y ahora que lo tengo todo se siente bien víctima Es que no es mi culpa que no tenga nada Trabaja de noche hasta madrugar No poder mostrarles que si sí es capaz Y si eres una víctima Voy a pa' su casa dejémosla estar Eres como un pez perdido en el mar Muestro porque quiero no es necesidad I find these rods ideal for me because I'm not a real strong person, but the uh, Ziplex 5050 I find very well. Uh, I've got um, heavier reels on today because we're in a bit of uh, rough ground. I've got um, a Slosh HSA on one and a Saltus on the other, both loaded with um, 20 pound F1 line with uh, Sakuma shot leader and Sakuma hook length. What size hook have you got there? I've got a, a one, a two o on the top, and a three o on the bottom. But if I put a squid bait out, I might go to four o, depending on what else I mix with it. Just one big single? No, two. Still a panel? Yeah, panel rig all the time, because that way, if I get anything, I'm going to pull out of it, pull out of the snags or whatever, because the lead comes, the fish comes up, the lead comes down, and it just break it out. So oh, that's good. only if I've got a rotten bottom on. If not then <laughs> good night <problems>. Vienna <laughs> this is Porlock Bay uh, on the point of um, near Minehead and Bosington um, we, we're fishing in behind the cottages at Porlock because I, up on the point as we go up there uh, there's a big kelp bed that runs right along and this goes into a sandy bay here and um, it's a bit snaggy so we have to go a bit heavier in gear are you out on sand at all at low water we're, there? Is it? Uh, low water we're on sand. As the tide comes in we're on the rocks. It's um, a very nice place to fish. Sometimes it can be very awkward depending on the weather. But that's like all fishing. And what's a good sort of br uh, wind direction and what's a bad direction the best, here? The best wind we can have is southerly or southwesterly. And that's behind us coming across the top of the hills. Um, north and northwesterly and easterly is the worst, like anywhere really. Yeah. He's got another one. There's a look. Um, it might be handy. That's a chap right next to us there. Could be into his second one, is he? He's certainly winding as though he's had a bite there. Hadn't tightened up yet. Uh, what about tides, Paul? What, uh, big tides, small tides for this sort of Somerset coast? Well. I prefer to fish fairly big tides, between 10 and a half and 12 metre tides. I think that way you've got a bit of depth of water at low water as well. And it comes in a lot quicker so you're not sitting around waiting all the time. Yeah. And I think it pushes the fish in more. So um, species to get through the year, I mean we're here in the summer obviously well, we're hoping for smooth hounds. Smooth hounds today, dogfish and maybe an odd ray. Yeah. Um, in the winter you've got like conger, codlin. And you've got bullas as well here in the summer. Uh, codlin, bass, they all run through here and it is 
a quite a good place to fish. It's known as a good mark then? It is a good mark, but you lose a lot of gear. Okay. Uh, high water, what sort of distance you can have to, you know, to avoid it, or can you barely avoid the rocks? 80 to 100 yards, you might just get over the, the rocks. Yeah. Uh, depending on the size of the tide, of course. I mean, if you've got a smaller tide, a 10 meter tide, you probably get over the top of it all the time. As you go up, as the tides build, it's harder to get over the top to of it. To reach it, to reach yeah. it, yeah. And then you use rotten bottoms, yeah. which, as you know, are just a, a light line on the end of the lead and lose the red lead and just pull it, break it out. Get your gear back, get the terminal rig you back. You get your terminal rig, you lose your lead. Yeah. So any rubbish leads, this is the place to bring them. And any, <laughs> any, yeah, anybody, uh, say beginners of that, might not be the best place for a beginner to come, except um, at low water maybe? Maybe low water, right up near the stakes. Because about 30 or 40 yards out is a sand bay that goes out, and it goes out right the way through. But up this end, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. What a magnificent setting that was. It made me want to get, yes, the sun oil out. But a move down the coast and a change in the weather definitely stirred things up a bit.
Well, it was wor worth the move to a high water mark after, after fishing low water. It was getting a bit hit or miss with the tide coming in and the rock, so we've moved up here to St Aldridge Bay. Uh, it's a good move actually because uh, we've had a couple of bites. I think you've had a dogfish, haven't you? And, yeah, had a and, doggy, uh, yeah. Second cast on a whole squid. I've got a, a small thornback ray, which my son Cody's got. Have you ever caught those before, Cody? Once. I think you caught one. Didn't He's you had once. one before, has he? On the boat, didn't you? Yeah. That's yeah. a nice fish. But you would have liked to have caught it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Are you going to put it back in the water for us? Yeah. Yep. Go on then, let's go and put it back then. Go on, put it on your belly, don't get your feet wet. No, I'm on the belly, just putting it all down. Other way out. Other way out. That's it. That's it. You should be able to go. Throw it. Don't get a booty. There we go, guys, following on from Craig's catch. That nice ray he had. I've got another nice dogfish there. So the fish, even though it's rough, they're definitely on the bite. Paid us to move. I'm going to get him unhooked and I'm going to get him in the water so I can get that bait back out there. This one took a, a half a squid, so they're on the feed, they're taking small baits and they're taking big baits. It was certainly a bit breezy on that beach, but you can see that stirred the colour up in the water and it turned those fish on. Sometimes you just have to follow your instincts. My instinct was get up early in the morning, Graham. I'm not great getting up early in the morning, really I'm not. I'm a night bird, I like to fish at night. But get up early, hit the beach, same time, and see if I could catch something again. Oh, sometimes guys, those gut instincts are the ones to follow. Except when you've had a bad curry. Guys, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, risk changing marks. I'll come out for the same tide in the morning, just up the north of St Aldridge Caravan, and a small dogfish first cast. You know that old saying about the early bird catches the worm? In this case, it's the early angler catches the fish. Only a dogfish, but hey ho, I'm not worried. The birds are out. The wind is down a bit, there's a fish on the end of the line, that one took a third of a sandal, not a half, not a quarter, but a third of a sandal. Let's get the chappy back, I want to get a, well, I want to get bait out as fast as I can, and as far as I can. Now here's another totally awesome tip, I got that fish because I timed the arrival of the tide for the same time that I woke up. So I woke up about 6.30. Last night I was here, high tide, 7.30. Well, don't forget, the tide cycle is generally, give or take, an hour later each day. So I figured, do you know what? 
I'm only in the caravan at the top of the cliff. I might just well walk down if I'm awake and put a couple of three hours in, right place, right time, and that's been proven. And wind is down, it's sweet. You know what? I'm pretty pretty much sure I'm gonna be on for another fish. What a thing to say with the camera, but that's what I, that's what I reckon anyway. So if you do go anywhere, remember the tide cycle, even if you caught it at a low tide, it doesn't really matter. Because if you caught fish at low tide, stick an hour on and then hit the place again the following day and you could be in for the same type of fishing. And listen, with fishing, every day is different. In fact, <laughs> there's a bite there. I'll see if I can get that bite for you guys. There's a bite on. If I line them up for you. You might, might just be able to see. I think it's the lower rod as you look at it. What I've done is I've got two three hook rigs further out and I've got a, a giant ragworm close in because Craig said there might be an outside chance of a bigger fish running in close to shore. I'll probably overcast a little bit. Now, isn't that the way? As soon as you put the camera on the, on the rod, you don't see the bite. I assure you, it was a bite. It's probably another dogfish. Now, I can still see a gentle tap in there. There you go guys, finishes off my trip. On the way home now, I think packing up time. Good job I let that bite progress because that's an eel and looks like he's got two baits, but he actually has. And this is called a green eel down here in Somerset. For some reason they call it a green eel because its back is green, but where I come from, they just call that a silver eel. And he has taken a squid and it's like ragworm or lugworm combo. Do I care? No, it's another fish bites the dust. Good trip. He's as slimy as anything. Yuck. Come on, off the hook you come. Now, one of the anglers down here obviously lost the plot through not catching any fish. But I mean, is there really a need for this? A 12 gauge shotgun cartridge? <coughs> That's a way to catch a fish, guys. There you go, it gets better, guys. Get double shots on this three hook rig. I'm not even clipping it down or anything, I'm just leaving it loose like this. Um, a double shot of whiting there on worm just goes to show you worm very often worm tipped with a little bit of squid does the business So I did warn you guys, a double on dogfish. So absolutely everything's on the feed at the moment. What a good job. I took the trouble to get out of bed this morning and hit that tide at the same state it was last night because it's just a whole different ball game now that wind's down. Let's get these guys back. Well, well, well. It just goes to show you on Beach Quest, moving to another beach can often pay Big dividends. A 
And here's another tip when it comes to checking out those ties. Not only are they an hour, roughly an hour later each day can come in, but you can check by the tide line. So if you look along this beach here, because this tide's just starting to fall off, we passed the high tide barrier. It's going down, you can see dry sand and dry rocks on the right, and all the wet pebbles and sand, mud and shingle on the left. You can also see the weed line that's been piled up here with bits of bladder rack, all the weed along the edge. So you know exactly where the high tide was. But here's the thing, people. You have neat tides and spring tides. The spring tides will be, if they're increasing, which they are at the moment, means this high water line along here, tonight, on that 12-hour cycle, is going to be a little bit further up. And then in the morning, if I do want to come back, and there's every chance I'm going to, before I go home, it's going to be further up. Now the last really big spring tide is just on the top here, which you can see, and that is the top of the spring tide. So you can get the reverse of that as well, dropping down. So look at your tide tables, see whether you've got what's called a making set of tides, in other words they're getting bigger and bigger, or you've got a falling set of tides, which means they're dropping off. That gives you an idea roughly where that water's going to come up to and where to set up your base camp. Well, there's nothing I like more than a little bit of beach combing when those bites slow up. And one of the things I found just made me wonder a little bit what some of these people down here, the fish here, are eating. Have they got really bad curries? I don't know. But I've just found the world's biggest toilet roll. That's right. It's horrible. But even worse, I don't ever want to tread in what they left. Fish banging on that rod, as you can see, actually pulled back with the camera zoom so you could see what a fake bite it was actually a bite there. I'm just tempted because I'm getting right at the bottom of the two hours down from, ebb, uh, from the flood on the way down is ebbing. I'm about on the limit of where I can sort of pack up. So do I wind in? I might get it, I might miss it. It's still there, look, it's still there. I think I'm just going to let it hang on for a minute in case. Mr. Greedy wants a second fish as well. We're pretty sure after this, with the black cloud coming, you're gonna to have to pack up. Well, I never did convert that last bite into a fish, but it doesn't matter. I was out there on the shoreline enjoying myself. Fresh breeze, fresh air. Who knows what you're gonna catch when you're shore fishing. Anyway, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you guys. In the next episode, yes, it's coming up fast. It's another fish field action busting. I hope something will bust. I hope it's not the line. Look out for it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell on TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. We'll see you guys in the next film.